All right, brace yourselves. So today's case is kind of going to introduce something that's very similar to our next video. Um, I talk about it a little bit when I was writing my, basically my show notes, my research notes for this. Um, I do mention it. I will mention it. I will say it. Um, but just so you know, just prefacing this, um, I am talking about another school shooting. If that's not your jazz, click out. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the Red Lake shootings that was committed by Jeff Weiss. I believe that's how you say his last name. I was saying Weiss because the way I see it for me, my brain thinks it's Weiss, but typically Weiss has two S's and this is W-E-I-S-E. Anywho, um, so if that piqued your interest, I highly suggest you to hit that subscribe button, turn your post notifications on to all that way you know whenever I upload, and let's get into today's true crime case. So the Red Lake Senior High School in Red Lake, Minnesota was your typical high school. That was until March 21st of 2005. On this day, Jeffrey James Weiss, or Jeff as he would go by, would go on a murderous rampage that would end with his eventual suicide. So this case to me is very similar to that of Luke Woodham, but there are some differences obviously. Jeff Weiss was being treated for his mental health issues and Luke Woodham was just Luke Woodham. Also, one committed suicide, one is in prison for the rest of his life, but can be up for parole. Meh. Not going to touch that. Anywho, so let's get into today's case, shall we? I'm not denying that Jeff didn't have a bad life or bad upbringing. His father committed suicide during a standoff on a reservation property with police. Uh, Jeff's grandfather was also there. Um, his mother also would get into a really bad car accident that left her like, in really bad shape. He then would go live with his grandparents. Um, he, his grandparents eventually divorced as well, in, like, halfway through his, his stay with them. So, um, basically, he bounced and bounced between broken homes a lot. And he bounced around a lot. And because of this, he was bullied. He would get, he would constantly get teased. I mean, he was a tall, broad dude. He was six foot feet tall, 250 pounds, and he always wore black. You're welcoming bullying to yourself. If somebody takes offense to that, to that, I'm sorry, but in this world, when you look different, I'm saying that generalized, when you look different from somebody else, they're going to tease you for it. They see a giant ass dude wearing all black who is who's broad, they're going to, they're going to say something to you and they're going to be like, wow, you look strange. Wow, you look weird. It's going to happen. If anybody is watching this and they're super PC, I'm sorry. But actually, I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. That's my own personal opinion. This is my channel. If you don't like it, leave. Anywho. Plus, they also bullied him for the standoff issue with his father and how his father committed suicide. So it doesn't help. He was just trying to live his life, but he did have a dark side. Apparently, he had a notebook that was full of dark thoughts. Thoughts about death, people being hung, and swastikas. So to teachers, they thought he was quiet and semi-normal, but to Jeff, he would voice his thoughts online. As many kids do that aren't being heard, they're going to voice it online. So he specifically would also voice how much he hated Red Lake, especially the school that he went to. So a quote from a forum he put up. I'll put it on the screen as well. I try not to be aggressive in most situations. I'll use force if I have to, but I'm not about to go out and pick a fight. I'm mostly defensive. I'll defend myself if someone tries something, but other than that, I'm a peaceful person. So in 2004, he tried to commit suicide twice. The first time was with his belt in May, and after he tried, he would think to himself, this was not the path, and he changed his mind. I do have... I'll kind of revisit this in a little bit, so because I have something he wrote about this, but I'll revisit it in a little bit, because it has to do with a lot more of the stuff that he does online. So, but just the next month in June, he would try again by slicing his wrists downwards, not across. He would be sent to a facility where he would be treated for his suicidal tendencies, his violence, and depression towards himself. He then would be treated with Prozac, which is a medicine that is categorized as an antidepressant. Per the FDA, there was a warning added to the label as of October of 2004 of an increase of violence or suicide amongst youths that are taking Prozac. So with all of this going on, he also 
was into horrorcore. Which is ironic because the next video after this is called The Horrorcore Killer. No, I did not choose that on purpose. I didn't do it purposefully. That's just the way that when I pick out cases to do for a month, I put them in a list. And I don't do any research on them until it's time for me to do research on them. And just the way that this all fell together is very bizarre. But so, and that's a spoiler alert. So be on the lookout for that for my next video, The Horrorcore Killer. So horrorcore is a hip hop genre in which uh, notable acts of violence are included in the lyrics. So ICP is a part of the horrorcore kind of genre. Um, and so Jeff also would go onto platforms called Mars, which is where he would get a lot of the music that he would listen to. And he would listen to a man called Jimmy Don. So there's specifically one song that he does, which is called Darker Side, in which it is about a school shooting. And this song Jeff really liked. But other than the horrorcore scene, he was extremely active online, which I previously mentioned. He would share a ton of his feelings online, including his Nazism, Nazism ideations. He would visit Above Top Secret, which is a defunct, or no, is it? No, this one, this one is still active, but one of them is not active. Uh, some of the websites that I mentioned, they're defunct and some are still active. But so Above Top Secret, which is a forum that still has his account under his name, Weiss. No, I'm not kidding. How it's still up, I have no idea. But on there, he would post about things such as conspiracies, cryptozoology, and paranormal things. There is specifically a post on there that talks about the Muslim SS. And on this post, there is a reply that says, tread carefully with the subject. And then Jeff also responded to that comment that uh, saying, basically, I am not a neo-Nazi white supremacist. He clarifies that he is a Native American and how he doesn't condone any acts of genocide or the Third Reich. Just that he wanted to have a discussion of something he hadn't seen on the board or on this website. So I get that he's a free thinker and everything, but dude, you're 16 at this moment and you have this type of dark thought going on. A little early in my opinion, but that's me. Most of his posts are about his personal experiences and paranormal happenings, which are cool, but this wouldn't be the culmination of his online use. He did also put up a post of his thoughts about his first attempt of suicide, so this falls in line with where he tried to hang himself. I'll have this quote on the screen as well. I had went through a lot of things in my life and had driven me to a darker path than most choose to take. I split the flesh on my wrist with a box opener, painting the floor of my bedroom and blood I shouldn't have spilt. So that part is in reference to his second suicide attempt. So after sitting there for what seemed like hours, which apparently was only minutes, I had the revelation that this was not the path. It was my decision to seek medical treatment, as on the other hand, I could have chose to sit there until enough blood drained from my downward lacerations on my wrist to die. This, th those words can still be found on the website. He would also use in frequent a website called the Libertarian National so Socialist Green Party, or LNSG, which is a defunct website. So on this website, he had the users called Native Nazi and Todensengel, which is German for Angel of Death, or Todensengel. Uh, you can find this using the website Wayback Machine, which this is ironic to me from what I mentioned earlier about him not being a neo-Nazi. Also, on this site, he posted about his views and how he is pro-Nazi and how he also likes to call himself a Native American National so Socialist. Um, all of this makes my brain hurt because he's literally a pancake. What I mean by that is like one moment he's just a Native American and the next he's a Native American socialist with neo-Nazi ideations without using any titles. So he's literally trying to embody something that he says he's not, but he is at the same time. That's called a pancake. Uh, there's a lot of people in politics that are just like this as well. So, yeah. So he also would use Newgrounds, um... If you don't know what Newgrounds are, or just Newgrounds.com, um, I believe it's still active, but on there he would create uh, Flash animations. There's one in particular that showed him 
doing target practice or showed the character doing target practice on three people. And this included the main character using a assault rifle or an AR. So in this animation as well, um, there's a KKK member and there's police officers and grenades. The animation ends with the main character shooting himself in the head with a handgun and at like in the tail end of it, you hear gunfire. It's uh, quite the precursor to what's going to happen at Red Lake High School, we'll just say. So now that I've talked about kind of his online stuff, let's go back to his mental health for a second. Um, leading up to his attack, again, he was on Prozac, which is an antidepressant. And in 2005, just a week prior to the attack, his doctor upped his dose to 60 milligrams a day. His family was concerned with the raise in the dose because sometimes a chemical change that's so little of an increase can have such a detrimental repercussion from it. Especially when it's an antidepressant, you don't realize how much it affects you until it affects you. Like, I know somebody that their antidepressant only went up, I believe it was like 5 milligrams a day, but they take it twice a day. So that five milligrams a day, they ended up having an anxiety attack on day two. And only one of the doses out of the two was up to five, the, up the five milligrams. That's how much it affected them. Because of what the FDA was concerned with, with the rise of violence and suicide in younger or, or in youth that use Prozac, they really should have monitored him, monitored him better. But we can't, we can't turn back time and rectify this. We can only learn from this. So it's also because of this shooting that it opened the debate in public about Prozac usage on children. I remember this loud and clear because, um, again, a family member that was supposed to be on Prozac but ended up being switched to believe to Zoloft instead, which Zoloft still isn't good for youths, but still it helped this person. So let's talk about March 21st, 2005. So with a Ruger MK2 that he had purchased just a year prior in 2004, how he purchased this, I have no idea. Um, Weiss made his way into his grandfather's room. So his grandfather, Daryl Lucier Sr., is 58 years old, who, mind you, is a police officer, um, who was asleep in his bed, and Jeff entered the room and killed his grandfather while he was asleep. Unbeknownst to him, his grandfather's girlfriend, Michelle Sigana, who was 32, was on her way upstairs from getting laundry from the basement when we stole his grandfather's police issues Glock 22 and a pump action rifle or a shotgun, a pump action shotgun, corrections, and flood the house in his grandfather's police cruiser. So after taking the cruiser, he goes to Red Lake High School. Once he's there, he makes his way towards the school, but he ends up killing his second victim. This is 28-year-old Derek Brunn. Derek Brunn was an unarmed security officer on campus, and Jeff would kill him. He then would walk into the school, and he would just start letting off rounds in a hallway and in a classroom. This is where he would kill 62-year-old teacher Neva Wincoop Rogers, 15-year-old student Dwayne Lewis, 15-year-old student, student Chassier Lucier, Chanel Rosebear, who's 15, also a student, Thurlene Stillday, 15, a student, and Alicia White, 14, who is also a student. The police were informed and got to the school right away where they would encounter a shootout with Jeff, which is kind of like an oh my god moment because the same exact thing that happened with his dad is now happening with him. So the shootout would happen briefly in which Jeff would be injured. He would be shot in the right arm, the right leg, and lower back. Following this, he then would retreat into a classroom where he would take the shotgun and turn it on himself. Following the shootings in April of 2005, the Chippewa of Red Lake Band gave 15 grants to the victims' families and those that were affected by the shootings. These grants were from a memorial fund that had donations of over $200,000 from all over the country. Part of this, too, there was a grant given to Jeff's family, which was about $5,000, and they were given this so he could have a burial and a funeral. I try not to cover a lot of school shootings on my channel, which is quite ironic because I have Luke Woodham, TJ Lane, obviously Jeff Weiss, and I have another I have another school shooting for this month, which was totally unplanned. I don't like to cover them because of things that I encountered when I was in school 
dealing with lockdowns, dealing with um, shelter in place because of a possible shooter, stuff like that. It's not, it's not a fun situation and reliving those moments. It's not a fun situation. So um, whoever watches this, I hope you learn something from this. You definitely need to take into consideration that there are people that do have significant mental health issues that need to, those issues need to be taken care of sooner rather than later. So I'll see you guys in my next video.